Hello and welcome to this video on the RC Biker channel. Firstly I want to start by saying a massive thank you to Chris who bought this little table off my Amazon wish list. This little table will come in really really handy for filming RC car videos. It's got a nice white top as well which looks really good on camera and also it's collapsible so I'll be taking it out onto the field with me and it just gives you somewhere to put stuff rather than throwing it on the ground and getting covered in mud and stuff like that. So a massive thank you to Chris, your generosity is really really appreciated. If any, anybody else would like to purchase something off the Amazon wishlist to help the channel, the description the link to that is in the description down below so go and check it out if not no problem at all I don't expect it it's just a way of uh, helping the channel out because everything helps so today I want to do a little update on this Offner 18 scale nitro buggy you should have seen the video a couple of weeks ago where I introduced this buggy along with the really XX I got two nitro buggies from eBay and was very very happy with them the really XX you probably have already seen the starting video of that one by now if not that one I can safely say started very very easily great little car and you'll see videos of that one coming soon this one on the other hand a little bit more tricky now I had the engine started that's not the problem but this one was running a Pico 21 sized engine with a, um, a starter box set up so in other words it was just blanked off on the back plate and had no option to replace it with either a roto start or a pull start now whilst box starters are very good or starter boxes are very good they're more aimed at your race hobbyists because then you can just set the starter box up and um, just leave it there start the engine and it's in one place the trouble is when you're bashing the cars you have to carry the starter box you have to carry the batteries for it it's quite heavy quite big and a little bit of a faff around so I did get the engine started with it but I've decided to replace the engine and the reason I've decided to replace the engine is because of that reason it was on a, on a starter box and in order to convert the Pico engine to a pull start would have cost just as much as purchasing a, a new engine to buy the parts for the Pico engine was going to cost just as much as buying a brand new engine with the pull start or roto start option so that's what I've gone with so now you're probably thinking what engine have I chosen well let's go and have a look so the engine that I've gone for is a Mac 28 sized engine um, these are normally found in the Habayo Hyper 7s this will be the fourth engine of this kind that I've got I've always found these engines to be rock solid really very easy to start very easy to tune now this engine cost me 99 pounds and it's come complete with um, all the, the clutch assembly so we've got the, the um, flywheel all of the clutch assembly bell gear and everything like that um, this is the turbo type plug so it needs a turbo plug in there which I haven't got yet just ordered one which is the same as my uh, two hyper sevens that I've got as well um, it did come with the cops pull starter system but I've just uh, swapped it out for a normal pull start system there um, I do have a roto start that I could potentially use as well so there it is um, this one is brand new so it's 99 pounds came with all of that it's been removed from a brand new car from someone who was doing a brushless conversion so he's literally bought the car and then sold the engine straight away and I was the lucky buyer so I think that makes sense the Pico engine will probably sell for about 50 pounds so essentially this has cost me 50 quid and it would cost me more than that amount to get pull start new shaft and the other parts that I needed to convert that Pico engine to a pull start system so I think that was a pretty good setup so what we're going to do now is install it into the car so to install the engine into the car we don't really need that many parts obviously we just need the engine itself um, you're going to need a four-way wrench to get your new glow plug in a pair of pliers always comes in handy and then I've got a couple of screwdrivers I've got two millimeter hex and a three millimeter hex just to do up the um, engine mount screws also going to need part wise you're going to need a little um, exhaust manifold spring um, you can reuse these I tend to like to replace them after a long time they do stretch out and they kind of lose their springiness so I'd recommend if you're popping a new engine in let's use a new spring I've got all my screws there and also something definitely needed is some thread lock okay so we're doing metal to metal screws on the engine lots of vibration to stop them coming loose definitely really going to want to use some thread lock okay so the first thing we're going to do is remove the body shell and get that out of the way 
Now I like to take the opportunity when the engine's out to give the area a little clean, um, just to inspect your brakes give a little bit of lubrication to your drive shafts it's a good opportunity whilst the engine's out so um, we want to give ourselves as much room as possible so I'm going to take this fuel tube off because that's just going to get in the way just pop that to one side you can keep hold of it because uh, you're going to need it you're going to want to reuse it so first thing I'm going to do is what we need to do here is just set the carburetor up. Now on some cars or when you replace the engine the carburetor might not be the correct way round so the engine's obviously going to sit this way and we need the throttle linkage this side. Sometimes on a new engine when you purchase it the carburetor will be the other way around so the carburetor barrel the bit that's going to connect to your throttle linkage will be on this side and you'll have to spin it round. It's very easy to do. There is a screw that you would loosen off here or take it out, then you can remove the carb, just rotate it and put it back in, tighten the screw. Easy as that, and I did do a video on that ages and ages ago. So, first thing I'm going to do is just situate the car, uh, situate the engine into the car, just so we can see, make sure that it fits. And also now what I'm looking at is making sure that this linkage is in the correct location. So I can see we do need to twist this little part round. So what we need to do is twist this ball joint round so that it's further up this way so that the throttle linkage can connect onto it. So it's easiest to do that out of the car which is why we're going to check it now. So to twist that round there's a little allen key screw under there. It's a really really small one just going to loosen that off loosens off pretty easily don't need to take it out all the way and now you can twist that round so again situate it back in and I think about there is good where it is now so now we're just going to hold that and retighten doesn't need to be over tight, you don't want it too tight, but obviously we don't want it coming loose. And back into the car, and that will work quite nicely. So now you can see the position of this connector here is in line, ready for the throttle linkage to connect up to it. So now it's situated in, we can see it's going to line up quite nicely. Next what we need to do is insert the engine onto the engine mount. Now ordinarily you might you can do this one of two ways really. You can either take the engine mounts completely out, mount them onto the car and then drop the whole thing in. Remember to use some thread lock on your bolts just to show you what that looks like. So we've essentially got the screws and then we can slide this part on and then we have our engine mounts on. As I mentioned I've left the screws nice and loose which would allow me as I situate this in the car to slide the engine if we need to. I'll get the engine mounts screwed in lightly as well onto the chassis. Nice little thread lock and then that will allow us then to set the perfect gear mesh and get this in the perfect position before tightening it all up properly. So let's get the car back over and place it into position. So the engine is now sat into position, so the first thing we need to do is get the four engine mount screws in on there, a little bit of thread lock on each one. Okay, so now what we're looking at is the engine on loose engine mounts and also loose on its engine mount as well. So now what we need to do is get the engine into the ideal position. I'm going to start by screwing up the top engine mount screws. So you can see here that the centre of the spur gear is in line nicely with the bell gear. Okay and having the engine loose allows us to slide the engine forwards and backwards to get
get it into a nice position. Once I'm happy with that position, I'm going to now tighten up the four engine amount screws on the top. And we want to do them diagonally. So I'm first going to do this one, and I'm going to move over and do this one on this side. We're not going to tighten them all the way, we're just going to do them a little bit at a time. And now the other diagonal. And then just go around all of them, making sure they're nice and tight. Now, the only thing to do really is slide the engine side to side to sort out our gear mesh. And that's the gear mesh is the where the spur gear and the bell gear connect. Okay, so we're just gonna set that. I won't go into too much detail how to do it because on my channel, we've got four videos on how to set the gear mesh. Going to check the gear mesh. Actually looks quite good exactly where it is, to be honest. So I think that's what we'll go with. So I'll hold the engine nice and tight. Flip it over, I'm still holding the engine. Need the bigger screwdriver and again we're going to tighten them diagonally always tighten up your screws diagonally so i'm not going to go all the way just going to make sure now that they're relatively tight that we've still got a good gear mesh roll it listen to it and just going to look and that looks perfect Good stuff. So now I'm going to just go and grab the ratchet and just finish off tightening these four screws. Okay, lovely. So that's all installed. Nice and tight, nice and secure. Next thing we need to do is connect up the throttle linkage. So this is nice and easy. Just going to Pop it onto there, and that's connected nicely. Okay, so just two things left to do really. Just need to, I'm gonna take this off of here now. We need to just connect up the exhaust manifold, which goes on to there. Okay, so just a few technical problems. So I've ended up taking the manifold completely off. I think actually the issue is this manifold isn't suitable for this engine because I think it's getting caught on the... Yeah, it's actually hitting the pull starter housing. So that's frustrating. So I'm going to have a quick look, see if I've got another manifold that I can use that will fit this a little bit better. It's normal to come across these little teething problems, not an issue. So we can probably still use this tuned pipe, but just need to try and find another manifold that will be suitable. Okay, so I haven't got a spare manifold. Um, well, actually I do have a spare manifold, but it's one of these type that require just the rubber coupler to go on. So I'm going to use this exhaust I do prefer the polished ones. I'm going to use this one for now. That will work fine until maybe I'll swap it out or maybe I'll just get to like it. Let's just clear this old gasket and stuff off. Connect up the spring on this side. Grab it with the pliers. Situate it nicely and then use the pliers to just guide it into the hole. Okay, so the exhaust is on. Um, it's not the best fit in the world. Uh, it's a little bit big, really. This actually came from the Ansman Truggy, so it's not really a permanent solution, but it will just allow us to get the engine started up tomorrow. 
and then I can sort something out a little bit more permanently. Because it's just not quite at the right angle, doesn't quite sit how we'd like it to be. So just a couple of zip ties on here, um, got to put the fuel line on, air filter on, glow plug in the hole and then we're sorted. Okay, so there we go then. Um, all done. Overall, pretty happy with how the installation went. Um, took a little bit longer because I did come across a few complications. One of the engine mount screws was rounded off, so I had to use heat and various other techniques to undo that. Um, and then obviously the exhaust manifold from the other engine uh, doesn't fit properly, so I've had to use one from the Ansman and I've had to modify the mount a little bit as well just to take that but the engine is in and it's perfectly functional and run perfectly well i will get a new exhaust i think because i do prefer the polished effect and obviously i will need this one anyway for the for the other truck so i do need to source another exhaust as soon as possible but i think this one looks pretty nice i think you guys would would probably agree and in the next video what we're going to do is do the first start of this engine and the braking in as well following the um, instruction manual for the mac 28 sized engine i'm going to do it the manuals way this time uh, which states that we have to leave the engine running just idling for three full tanks and then doing a couple more tanks just driving around and then that's the braking procedure done so it's a little bit easier than the routine that i normally go through so we're going to give that a go in the next video so i hope you found this video useful hopefully it comes out uh, okay in the end it's been very bitty hopefully it comes out okay uh, with the power of editing skills and um, if it was helpful please leave a big thumbs up and i hope you guys are looking forward to seeing this car in action next time and i'll see you guys soon